With the rising cost of film, people are wanting to get better results out of their rolls. In this video, I'm going to explain how to get more out of your shots by shooting them wrong and turning something that would look like this into something more like this. Okay, so we're going to talk about the benefits of intentionally overexposing your film. If you're a photographer who's recently picked up film, you may have heard that overexposing your images can actually improve the final result, but you also might be wondering how and why this actually works. So why should you overexpose your film? If you're familiar with digital photography or even just taking and editing pictures on your phone, you will have probably seen that when you expose your image too brightly, it clips to white, looks washed out, and you can't really recover any of it in post. Well, when it comes to film, specifically print films that form a negative image, the opposite is true. The highlights are built up on the analog medium while the shadows remain totally clear with no information present. The core principle is that by overexposing your film shots, you can squeeze extra detail into the shadows while not messing up the highlights, and we'll get into how that works in just a minute. But first, how to make it happen. So just quickly, I want to explain some of the terminology I'll be using here. Uh, you may have heard of stops before. Pretty much all camera settings are measured in stops. A stop is a doubling or halving in the light that the film receives from the camera. The term stops comes from the click stops the different dials on the camera work in. Usually one click on a dial refers to one stop. So a plus one stop adjustment will double the light, a minus one stop would be half the light, a plus two stop would be four times the light, and so on. Now for overexposing your negative film, I recommend starting out with about plus one stop. So double the light to the film. You can play around with different values and experiment. Personally, I like plus half of a stop, but plus one is a good starting point to be able to really see the results and compare. So how do we make this happen? The simplest way to do this is to set the ISO dial of your camera to half the number on the box of the film. So a 200 speed film would be set to 100, a 400 to 200, and so on. This plus one stop adjustment doubles the light that your film receives from the camera. You may have heard that you can't change the ISO once you load your film into the camera, but this is only half true. While of course you can't change the physical film inside of your camera, you can change how you treat it. Seeing as this whole technique requires more light, if you find yourself in a low light environment, you can always set the film speed back to the box speed and back again when you have enough light. Now, many professional film cameras will have an extra dial or setting that looks something like this with positive and negative numbers. This is your exposure compensation, also measured in stops, and you can also use this to adjust your film speed. We can take advantage of this to control the camera's meter into always giving the film double the light. Adjusting your exposure compensation makes the exact same change as adjusting your ISO. For example, an ISO of 400 with the exposure compensation set to plus one will give you the exact same metering result as the ISO set to 200. It's just a more elegant way of setting things up if you'd like to leave the ISO dial on the box speed of the film and control your exposure with the exposure compensation dial. If your camera has neither a manual ISO control nor an exposure compensation setting, it probably reads the film speed directly off the canister with the TX code. And while it is possible to modify those DX codes in these settings, that's something for another video. But how does all this work? Wouldn't overexposing the film to give more detail in the shadows also blow out the highlights? Well, when you overexpose film, you're giving the shadow areas more light to work with, but, and this is key, even though the midtone and highlight areas are also getting the same bump in light, since film is an analog medium, that ceiling you hit in digital where your whites start to clip is way higher. When you look at the negative of an overexposed film shot, the whole frame appears darker, richer, with more detail. Even though the highlights are this much more intense, you can still see details in them just as clearly when printing or scanning. And the result is an image that's captured a much wider range of tones in the same singular shot. In fact, you can shoot most black and white film stocks three, four, five stops over, that's 32 times as much light, without seeing any adverse effects on the highlights. The film can take it. When referring to negatives, by the way, over and under exposure isn't even necessarily the right term because you can control that final brightness in printing. Instead, you'd be referring to a thinner or denser negative. In addition, all of this gives you a safety buffer against actual film underexposure. If your film shot would have been underexposed by a stop, congratulations, now it's just a box speed. And here are some examples of how this can look. You can see in this shot, nearly all of the shadow detail is either missing or tinted pretty strongly. By overexposing just a little bit, you open up those shadows and bring back all of that information, and you couldn't even tell in the highlight areas. The same thing goes here. You can see the entire sky, but at the same time, all the detail below is still visible. This shot's a great example of how colors can also shift when overexposing your film. 
You can see the shadows here are pretty strong green and the highlights don't really have any unique color tone. But when overexposing, everything gets leveled out together and you get a much more cohesive final image. To me, it's truly one of the reasons I enjoy film photography so much. I'll be the first to admit that digital is better in nearly every technical aspect. However, one thing it still can't do is create these high dynamic range shots in a single frame without it falling apart into a mess like this. I'd also venture to guess that this dense highlight look is a large part of the subconscious film look for most people, especially in cinema. Now it's important to note that there are some limitations to this plus one stop technique. You don't see people talking about this too much, but certain film stocks really can't handle it as well in their colors. Uh, their light looks just fine, you get the extra detail in the shadows, but the colors start to fall apart really fast. Cinestill and the Kodak Vision 3 stocks that they're derived from are notorious for this. You can see in this example that while you do get that additional shadow and highlight detail, the colors take a heavy hit, skewing to purple and green. On the other hand, films like Kodak's Portrait series are known for their ability to handle colors well at nearly any exposure, so they're a good choice if you want to experiment with this technique. But no other film I've come across improves as much with this technique as Fujifilm's Superior line. I'm pretty convinced that Fuji's just very optimistic about their box speed ratings. At box speed, it's consistently greenish in the shadows. A lot of people associate this with the look of Superior, but the cool thing is it doesn't have to be this way. By overexposing plus one stop, it's a night and day difference, not only improving the shadow detail, but also bringing out colors in the image that really bring it up to the standard that can compete with the best. Now I've been careful to only mention color and black and white in negative film stocks, but it's important to mention that this technique does not work on slide film. Slide film has a very narrow exposure latitude on its own, and any overexposure will blow out the highlights very similar to digital. Usually slide film should just be shot at box speed. Lastly, it's also worth noting that overexposing is not the same as pulling your film. Pulling film involves intentionally overexposing the film, but then compensating for this during development by using a weaker developer or shorter dev time. Both of these techniques can be used to adjust the overall exposure of the image, but with differing results. In conclusion, overexposing is a valuable technique to have in your toolbox to help give your images more dynamic range and make them look more professional. Just be sure to choose the right film for the job and play around with different exposure settings to find a look that you like best. And with that, I get to say the ever classic, thank you for watching. Oh, oh, hello. Hello. Hi. Hi, say hi. I'm just editing this video now and I thought you'd appreciate to know she's still here.